Well, I am excited to be here with you today. I know a lot of you, and I've known a lot of you for a long time. And I'm hoping that something that is said today will be the breakthrough for you. I know that with a business like this, it's not normal. It's not something that we grow up learning about. We're used to trading hours for dollars. We start when we're young, we're babysitting, we're mowing lawns, we're doing things, we're earning money for a chore. We're trading hours for dollars. And as we grow older, a lot of people stay in that rut. So finding something like this where you're completely having a change of the way that you earn income is a complete new venue for people. And so it often takes that little bit of an epiphany or a change in, in your life that change in paradigm when you all of a sudden grasp it. And I remember when we were newly married, going to events, not unlike this. In fact, I remember driving to an event like this. It was over 1,200 miles away. I know some of you have driven a long ways today. We drove there and didn't have money to get home. <laughs> we had to figure out how to get home once we got there. Our car was breaking down the whole way home, and so we were trying to figure out how to keep oil in it and how to keep it just chugging along. It took three days to get home. We were doing whatever it took. We never missed an event. And that's a little bit what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about some of the things that we did in the beginning that were right and some of the things that we did in the beginning that were wrong that kept us from achieving the success that we wanted to see if maybe something will ring true with you. So the handout you got, we're going to talk about in just a little bit. I don't want you to get distracted reading it right now. So flip it over, make notes on the back. <laughs> so in the beginning, we were going to events. We weren't always able to go together. We lived in Utah at the time. Some of the events were on the East Coast, and my husband would have to go alone. We didn't have the money to, to go, but we always made sure that we raised enough money somehow through doing odd jobs to make sure that at least one of us was there. We never, ever missed. And that was something we did right, because oftentimes at the big events is where you'll have that paradigm shift. So it might be today, it might be at convention in Phoenix, but if you haven't had yours yet, please don't miss an event because you don't know which one is going to be the one where somebody says something that is just exactly what you personally need. So we were doing that right. We were also using the product of the company that we were in, and that was right. We were trying to be a product of the product. We were learning all that we could about the products, and we were excited about using them in our home. That was good. But we were missing a very key element. We were not exposing the business properly. We were not exposing the business often enough. And I know that the Puddocks just talked a little bit about that, but it's absolutely key. If you're sitting here, and you're sitting here alone with no downline with you, there's a good chance that you are in my same boat. There's a good chance that you are not exposing this enough. So I wanna talk a little bit about that today. We're gonna to talk about how to do it. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to do it right. And we're gonna talk about creating some momentum in your organization that you can control. Because we talk a lot about momentum in the company. And that will happen. And I think for a lot of you that were just at our last event, you can feel it happening. You can feel that change that has come in the company. I know as leaders, we are very aware of it. A lot of us didn't sleep for about a week. <laughs> Guys, we've been looking for this for 20 years. We've been dreaming about this moment for 23 years. And for the first time in our lives, we finally feel like we're in the right place at the right moment, with the right company, to be able to have the right of our lives. And you are in the exact same place that we are. Because when the wave of momentum comes, it's like a big tidal wave. And it picks up everybody that's in the water swimming, and it carries them. So if you're swimming, prepare to swim hard and get carried. But understand that Harvard did a study and the study said that wherever you are when the momentum hits, you can pretty much add a zero to your check when the wave crests and lands. So if your check is $100 a month and you do nothing during that wave except hold on to your floaties, <laughs> when it comes out on the other end, you'll be making about $1,000 a month. But if you're doing $1,000 a month and you catch that wave, you might be doing $10,000 a month. Now this was a study that they did, and obviously there's no pure science in that, and we can't predict exactly, because you might have a superstar show up and it would make it bigger, or you might have a lot of people that sign up and they're just treading water and the wave goes right over their head. 
So the key is to get enough people in your organization swimming that when that wave crests and comes, it carries you all. And that's all we wanted. We were excited to have money. We were excited to have security. We were excited to be able to make enough money that we didn't have to think about it anymore. We would go to big events in other companies and we would see leaders that had made it and had been you know, at the top for decades and they had you know, islands, <laughs> they had private jets, they had cities that had their name on them, you know, and they had these huge, crazy, crazy things. And it was inspirational because we knew the company worked, but that wasn't what motivated me. I didn't ever need to have a private island that was named after my family. I love to go to the islands, <laughs> but that wasn't what motivated me. I just wanted to have my chance one time. My husband talks about that, my turn. My turn, one time in life and be able to ride that timing wave one time. So we were in that company and we weren't exposing. And guess what happened to our check? Nothing. <laughs> We would make a few dollars here and there, and I say that quite literally. We'd get a $3 check, or we'd get a $6 check. But it didn't ever grow. It wasn't ever anything that would help me to stop worrying about money. <laughs> it wasn't anything that would allow me to change my life or change life for my family or my next generation. And so we stopped with that company. Did it mean the company didn't work? No. Obviously, there were people in that company that had made a tremendous amount of money. And we looked at other companies and saw the same thing. And we looked at other companies and saw the same thing. But until we changed, our check didn't change. So if you're in this company and you can see everything around you growing and changing and your check is not changing, maybe check your rate of exposure. Also, it's important to have a plan. So I want you to flip your page over. And this is not corporate run, this is just Eric and I and our system that we had kind of had in mind because we were leaders looking for leaders and we were looking for stability in our organization so that when we built it once, it would continue to grow and it wouldn't fall apart and have to be continually rebuilt. We weren't looking for a revolving door. <laughs> we wanted to do it once and do it right and do it in a way that would change lives and create leadership, backed by leadership, backed by leadership, that would give stability to our organization and stability to the families that were following us, that trusted us, and give stability to our own family. And I'm so grateful we did, because when Eric had his accident and he went down, and he couldn't run at the speed he was running, because he was running extremely hard and extremely fast. I think he put 250,000 miles on our car in like 18 months. He was running as hard and as fast as physically possible and sometimes beyond that. He actually put himself in the hospital from exhaustion a couple times. He was doing everything he could because he looked at this company and all the factors were lining up. This was in the very beginning. This was six years ago when Life Vantage was just an idea. It was just formulating. And we felt so blessed that we got to be in that very, very beginning. And let me tell you right now, as grateful as I am that we got to be there in the very beginning, it's kind of been like swimming through quicksand a little bit for the last little bit. And we've lost some people that have lost faith because they've lost faith that maybe this isn't going to grow. So for those of you that have been in this for a long time and that are here with us today, number one, I applaud you because you had the vision to see bigger than what was happening right this minute. I applaud you because your dream is still alive. You've been kindling your fire. You've been keeping it alive when the winds have blown and the rain has come down and you've kept it alive. But I wanna stand here today and tell you, and I hope you know me well enough that I'm not gonna tell you something just to make you feel good. I'm gonna tell it to you because I believe it with every being of my heart. And I want to stand here today and tell you that I feel like the tide is coming in and I feel like the storm is cleared. And I feel like for the first time in our life, everything is truly aligned because we had it a little bit in the beginning and then things kind of went through some rough water. And I didn't understand what was going, and going on until we sat down with Darren Jensen a few weeks ago. And he looked at the growth of the company and he said, guys, this is normal. We draw the timing chart as a pioneering stage and it hits critical mass 
and it does this big jump, right? And he said, it's not really like that. <laughs> he said, your line should look more like a wave. <laughs> and he said, there are highs and lows as a company grows in the beginning. There are bumps in the road. There are challenges. And sometimes it hits very rough water. And he drew a little jaggedy line. <laughs> and he said, sometimes you go through rough water. And some companies won't ever come out of that. But he said, for those that do, and they come out, they almost assuredly grow. And we are right there. I feel like the rough water's behind us, and I'm one that chooses to look forward. I'm one that chooses to look to where we are, not where we've been. And I can stand here and say to you, if you're brand new today, your timing is perfect. Because you don't have to have the tough skin and the weather the weather that everybody else has had. You don't have to deal with some of the things that have gone on. You get to see the sunshine and the excitement and the beautiful beach. And now it's time to swim out there and get in the waves because the big one is coming. And I love talking about this when I'm in Hawaii because all the surfers are doing this. <laughs> they know, they know when the weather's just right. They can tell when the big wave is coming. They can tell where to be and what position to be in and how hard to swim to capture it just right. Well, some of the leaders in front of you are like those surfers, but with network marketing experience, they can see when the conditions are just right. And for those of you that have been around the pro tens, there's a reason we're all smiling ear to ear. <laughs> because we're here to ride the big wave. We're here to ride the wave of a lifetime. And we would travel any length and any distance to get to it. And so for those of you that have driven a long way, you're showing that determination. You're showing that, that drive to be in the right place at the right time but you have to be swimming. A friend of mine has a daughter that is extremely gifted. Everything really seems to come easy to her. You might know some people like that. She took her to a wave pool once, and all of her younger brothers and sisters are riding these waves as they would go through the wave pool, and they're squealing and laughing and having a great time. And her daughter's standing there with tears coming down her face. So the mom makes her way out to her to find out if she got hurt. Did she get hit by a, you know, somebody that was flowing by on a raft? What happened? And she looked at her and she says, Mom, I can't do it. And those are words that she really hadn't said before. But she said, Honey, you've got to be moving when the wave comes. You've got to be feet up swimming and the wave will carry you. That's what we have here. So how do you swim in Life Vantage? In Life Vantage, you have to act. You have to be an actor, not a reactor. And this thought came to me very, very hard and heavy a few months ago and I was praying for some inspiration and I do that a lot because I feel a great weight the importance of what we say I want to touch each of you and I want to be able to give you what you need because I remember being on the back row I remember being broke and beyond broke I remember having nothing and just wanting enough to feed my family just enough to have a roof over our head I just wanted that nugget that was going to be able to help us get out of our place and get us to a better place. And so I feel that responsibility. So I was, I was praying to try and figure out what to share. And the thought came to me then, and it came to me again this morning. So I will share it again. Oftentimes, we fall into a pattern of, of reacting. And as women, I know that we do it naturally. And I think it's actually a gift to some degree, because if we didn't react, what kind of mothers would we be? If the baby's crying again for the fourth time and you react, that's a good mother. If you don't, <laughs> because you've already taken care of the baby three times, that's not a good mother. So we react if the dishes need to be done. We react if the laundry needs to be done yet again. As husbands, we react when the boss says you need to do this. We react. If the boss says you need to be there by five in the morning, you react. Even when the alarm clock goes off at four and you don't want to get up, you react because the alarm clock says it's time. We tend to fall in a society of react. Do you follow me? So how do people make it? How do they get out of that rut? They act. They do something above and beyond what they're told to do. They start thinking for themselves. They start taking actions that the people around them maybe aren't. A lot of your friends and family might be at the lake, they might be at the park, they might be at a soccer game, and you're here. 
You're here on a beautiful, sunny Saturday afternoon. You are acting, choosing to make a difference in your future. Monday morning when you get up, what will you do? How will you choose to act rather than just reacting to all the normal things that are on your schedule? Will you choose to act to make a new list? Will you choose to act to draw a line in the sand, perhaps, and say what we've done in the past is in the past? We will continue to help all the people that have emerged from our business, but it's time to move forward. It's time to make a difference with a new group of people, and perhaps some of those people will come along with us that are already here. But I am moving forward. I am moving on to Pro 7. I am moving on to Pro 8 or to Pro 9 or to Pro 5, whatever it is that you need to do. So I want to teach you what we teach our people on how to act properly. For those of you that stood today as a Pro 1, a Pro 2, a Pro 3, I applaud you for hitting it. And now I want you to take a self-evaluation. Because when I sit down with someone and they tell me that they've hit one of those levels, I ask them how they did it. Because if you did it just simply through volume, you haven't really built a very strong foundation for your business. Because let's face it, if you're giving up your Saturday and you paid to be here, chances are you want to make more than $300. Will you raise your hand if I'm right? Okay, most of you want to make more than $300. For the rest of you, I appreciate you being here. <laughs> but for those of you that want to build a million dollar business, you've got to have a solid foundation. If you wanted to build a high rise and you build it on two legs in the sand, how, long, how strong is that going to be? So to go pro three, you only need two legs and you only need a little bit of volume. That's like building a two legged high rise in the sand. How strong is that? So what I want to teach you today is what I tell my new people is stop focusing on the volume. Stop focusing on I want to hit pro one or pro two or pro three and focus on finding leaders because those leaders are the footings for your business. The leaders are the foundation that will allow you to build a strong business. So on this paper that I've given you, it talks about signing up 10 people. And we teach people to do that. And oftentimes when people find that nugget that turns it for them, they have to take a moment and do some burst of momentum in their business. This is momentum that you can control. This is not the timing of the company. This is not momentum in your city. This is momentum in your personal business. And every single leader that I've seen grow has done this at some point. So if you haven't, maybe that's a nugget you're missing. So if you haven't done it, it's time to rewrite your list and make it at least 100 people long. I know that's hard, but we all know people and we're all around people. So if you don't know them, go meet them. <laughs> go join something that has a group of people that meets and get to know people. Get out, go to the park, go to the mall, go somewhere and meet people. It's okay to just say hi and meet someone. Find out a little bit about them. It's a numbers game. Chances are, if you were to walk through the mall, 20% of the people that you pass would be looking for something to change in their life. So you just have to find them. So we sign up a batch of 10 because historically about three to four, probably three usually, maybe four if you're really good, if you know the right people, right? Might actually do something with that. This is platinum packs, guys. This is not the little bitty packs, the little toe in the water. We only teach platinum packs because I feel like people are either in it to make some money or they should be product users, in which case they should be a customer. But if they're in it to make some money, get them in a product, product pack, start pack that's going to make them eligible for all the bonuses. We don't want people leaving anything on the table. So you sign up 10 platinum packs and only three are going to do it. Really? Well, it's kind of the 80-20 rule again, right? 80% <laughs> of the people that you show aren't interested. 20% of the people will look at it and about 2% might actually run with it. I was talking with someone this morning. I said, if I had to talk to a thousand people for every leader that I had in my organization, if I had to weed through a thousand people that told me, no, you're crazy, that's a cult. <laughs> That'll never work. My brother-in-law's sister's friend's neighbor did that, and it didn't work. <laughs> it doesn't matter what they tell you. They're not the 2% you're looking for. So if I had to talk to 1,000 people to find a blue Elam, I'd talk to 5,000 blue. If I had to talk to 1,000 people to find any one of my leaders, I would do it. 
because it's worth it. So are you going through enough leaders? Are you going through enough people to find your leaders? But if you sign up 10 and then find the three or four that are ready to run, it becomes fun. They're calling you going, did you know there's a master class on Saturday? Do you want me to pick you up? <laughs> They're calling you saying, hey, I've got a meeting set up on Tuesday. Can you come? Oh, that's okay. I'll just do it. <laughs> They're calling you saying that they talked to the guy at work and he wants to sign up. And you're saying, what did you tell him? <laughs> They're excited. They're out taking the business by its horns. They're taking ownership. You're looking for those people because then you run with them. And what do you help them do? Exactly what you did. Make a list and go to sign up 10 people. And I'm not going to go into a lot of the, the how-tos on that. You got a lot of it from the pedics. So the key is putting them in front of the information, right? Take them to a meeting. Take them, you know, show them a webinar. There's phone calls. There's so much information. There's so many different options. And then my leaders learn to show the presentation themselves. Because you'll hear people talk over and over about the leaders and the presenters make all the money. But here's the secret, guys. There's no qualifications to be a leader in this company. You don't have to be a certain height or a certain gender, a certain background, a certain race, a certain religion, a certain educational or cultural status. It doesn't matter. He who helps the most people wins. So if you show enough people, you'll find your leaders. You help your leaders sign up 10 to find their leaders. And out of their three to four, you go help them sign up 10. It's just an incremental thing. And the beauty of it is right now we've got a brand new bonus that says for every five people you bring in, in a month, you get to be part of the platinum pool. I am very excited about that bonus. <laughs> I'm very excited to see how it plays out. So what I'm telling people is if you're brand new, sign up five this month and five the next month and capture it twice. <laughs> Why not? Right? We're in it to make money. Let's make the most bang for our buck. So if you're going to start sharing the presentation, if you've been in this for a while and your sponsor lives far away or your sponsor has moved on to help other people or let's say your sponsor is even still around, you still want to start showing this as soon as you can because then it puts it in your hands. So if you find that person that says, yeah, what is this? And you say, well, do you have 45 minutes that I can show you the whole thing right now? And maybe it's over a lunch break. You can do it right then. You don't have to try and say, well, when you get off work, what are you doing? Or can I coordinate your schedule with my busy upline? Or there's a meeting next Thursday. They're interested right now. So being able to show them right now is powerful. And then being able to put them on a three-way call if they still have questions is perfect because all the person upline has to do is answer a few questions and close the deal. But you've already done a lot of the work and that's what we did hard and fast in the beginning. We figured out what the product was about. We loved the ABC because it was third party credibility. Find something that you can use to be some credibility for you so it's not just all coming out of your mouth. If you love the American Heart Association Circulation Magazine, you can use that as your third party credibility. Use whatever it is that you feel like you need to be empowered to be able to share this. That's all we did. And then we figured out how to do it. So we went to a mentor of ours that had become extremely wealthy in another network marketing company because it's good to learn from people that have done what we want to do. So he told us how to tell our story and how to show a plan. Now, it wasn't his company plan because we weren't in his company. But what he told us has helped us through several companies and it's made a huge difference. So I want to share that with you today. He said, it's important to tell your story. It's important to tell the company story and it's important to tell them how the money's made. So let me break that down as it relates to life vantage. Your story, as I see it and Eric sees it, is why are you here? What brought you into life vantage? I dare say a large percentage of you have never done network marketing before. So why this one? That's an important part of your story. If you can stand in front of someone and say, I was that negative person that thought network marketing was for crazy people that couldn't make money any way else. I was that person that said I would never do it. And here I am. Let me show you what I found that made me look at this and want to do it. 
That's powerful. Make sure you're using your story because just sharing the stuff that you hear on stage is a regurgitation. It becomes a sales pitch. People don't like that. If you can talk from your heart about why you're here, what got into your heart, what got under your skin to make you want to do this, that's your story. If you go to an event and you meet Darren Jensen personally and you get to shake his hands and look in his eyes and see his vision for this company and you get excited, that's part of your story. So any event that you can go to, you can take part of that and make it your story. But you have to know what your story is because people need to know that. They need to know why you're real. They need to know that this is personal to you. They need to know what attracted you to this business. Why did you join it? The next thing is the company story, and it's exactly the things that the FedEx covered. It's the company, the fact that we're publicly traded, the fact that we have a CEO that has vision unlike anything I've ever seen. He just came from the fastest growing network marketing company in the world and left it to come here because of what we have. That's powerful. It's the product. Learn to talk about the product, but don't be many scientists. Remember that when you're sharing the product, it needs to be so duplicatable that the people that are hearing you talk can say, I can do that. And I want to take it. <laughs> so learn enough about it that you can be impactful, but don't give all the deep science. Let them know where they can find it because that's duplicatable and they can use the science resources that we have also. It's the timing. Right now, we sit at the cusp of literally creating generational wealth. Every single person that I know, and I could probably count them on two hands, <laughs> I don't know a lot, but the people that I know that have ridden through that timing with a company, with a network marketing company, with a stock, doesn't matter, guys. If you can ride that one time in your life, you create wealth that passes from generation to generation to generation. We all know the families that found oil. We learned about them in history class. That wealth passed through generation to generation to generation. So unless you sit on top of something that's gonna be really, really lucrative and you find gold tomorrow when you're digging and putting in radishes, I suggest you take this into your own hands and create your future, create your wealth, create the thing that is gonna be passable to your children, to your children's children, and to those that come behind. We absolutely have something in our hands that probably will never happen again. Eric and I knew what we were looking for for the last 10 of those 20 years. And this is the first time we've found it. We've looked at over 70 companies trying to position ourselves in a place with something that would be life-changing, that would bless families, and that would impact our family in a way that would give us time freedom, financial freedom, and an ability to change not only everything about our family, but be able to go out and change the world. And it still gives me goosebumps to think about that. Because when we were going to work every day and I'd kiss my husband goodbye and he'd go off to wash windows, it helped one family see clearer. <laughs> Until the next bird ran into the window. It wasn't longevity, it wasn't life changing, right? It put a little bit of money in our pocket and it helped us get food on the table for a few more days. Guys, this is bigger than probably anything we've ever done in our lives. You sit here with a chance to change your future. If you don't have leaders established, it's time to establish them. On the rest of that sheet that I gave you, it talks about identifying five leaders in your organization. So as you find your leaders, your three or four that want to run, and they lead you to some people that want to run, and they lead you to some people that want to run, hopefully this is in like three or five legs, or even seven or nine, or however you want to build it. But you're finding leaders that emerge. And here's a little secret. Oftentimes leaders emerge about five levels deep. I don't know why. <laughs> I wish I could tell you the why behind but leaders tend to surface about every five levels. So if you're trying to ride your personals and say, you have to do this, sometimes we want this more for our people than they want it for themselves, don't do that. Just look for the people that wanna run and help them. 
and find their people that want to run and help them and find their people and pretty soon you'll find somebody that wants to try and outrun Blue Elam and I dare them to try. <laughs> So you do everything that you can to find five, and they have to be in at least three lakes, but preferably five, because if you can have one leader in each leg, it's more profitable in the long run. But you're gonna lock arms with these people, and you're gonna help them start to build a solid foundation, right? So they're gonna go out and they're gonna sign up their 10 people and look for three or four of those to go help sign up their 10 people. It's exactly what you did, and along the way, they're gonna hit Pro 3 because volume does follow and the company does track that even though I'm asking you not to focus on it. As you're doing the proper behaviors, the volume follows. So you're gonna have those five people hit Pro 3, you'll automatically hit Pro 5. And as they go Pro 5, by doing the same thing with their people, you hit Pro 7. So all of a sudden, this insurmountable task of creating $100,000 in volume that seems so lofty and so insurmountable when you look at it from just the beginning. If you do the beginning right, you're not running alone. You're running by people that want to get a Jeep. You're running by people that want to take a trip. You're running with people that want to be free from their job. You're running with people that have a bigger vision, that have a bigger why than maybe even you do. And when you find those people and they're running, it's automatically going to push you. So we teach our people really early on. The very beginning, you're focusing on yourself, you're focusing on your own success, and you're focusing on what's gonna help grow my business. You're looking for your people, right? But pretty soon, the focus comes off of you, and it goes on to your people. So it's a shift. And you're helping your people achieve their goals. And when you help enough people achieve their goals, your dreams come true. And I kind of hesitate to say that because it sounds kind of cliche and storybook. <laughs> and I talk to people and they look at this and they start to understand it and they're like, this is too good to be true. There's gotta be a problem. There's gotta be a flaw. There's gotta be something that you're just spinning, you know, and that you're, you're saying, because it just sounds too good to be true. But guys, it's real. On the flip side of that chart, I put the earned income chart because when I show the comp plan, that's the start of the comp plan. That's the residual. So if you were uncomfortable talking about the money, you need to learn to be comfortable talking about the money because the three parts he told me was you talk about your own story, the company story, and how the money's made. If you can do nothing else but point, you can now show the money side. So show them the third column and ask them at what point would that start to impact their life. I've had people look me straight in the eye and say, I wanna be a pro three, honestly. If they only need a few extra hundred dollars, that's often enough to get people through the end of the month. A lot of times people are only short three, four hundred dollars. In fact, the government had a report that said people could avoid bankruptcy with an extra three to four hundred dollars. So that might be all they need. But for a lot of people, they look bigger and they say, I would love to have an extra twenty five hundred a month. What would that do to your life? I want you to think about it for a minute. What did you make last month? If we added an extra $2,500 to your check next month, what would you do? Would you finally put tires on the car so they're not so bald? Would you fix the refrigerator that's coughing and sputtering before the food goes bad? Would you put braces on the kids? What would you do? Would you pay off a credit card? Would you start lump summing it together to put a down payment on a house? Would you buy a car? What would you do? And what if that money came in month after month after month? And as you continue to build and as you continue to change lives, it goes up. So I stand here and I tell you that dreams can come true because they do. Because as you look at that chart, we've helped people reach every single level on that chart. And the lives that have changed as people hit seven, eight, nine, ten. It's hard to describe. It's hard for me, and I can't, I don't even know where to start to stand up here and tell you what a day in the life of a Pro 10 looks like. Well, I can right now, because right now we're doing phone calls and meetings and follow ups and <laughs> exactly what you're doing. Probably as fast and hard as anybody in here can even imagine. Blue and I were talking this morning, and it was really hard to take time to even come out because we're so 
we need to be in 10 places today. <laughs> but when things calm down and you get to have complete control of your life and you get up in the morning and you look at your kids and you say, what do you want to do today? And it really is an open-ended question. <laughs> and it doesn't have limitations and it doesn't have restrictions. And it just literally is, what do you want to do today? And you watch because as your kids grow up in this type of a business, it changes them because they grow up serving people. So a lot of times when we ask our kids what they want to do, they want to go build a house in Mexico. <laughs> they want to go take food down to somebody in downtown Phoenix that's struggling. They want to go and help impact someone's life for good. And they dream big. When my daughter was eight, I remember we were in a grocery store and she looked at me, she says, Mom, when can we go to Maui again? And the lady next to us looked at her. <laughs> <laughs> but you teach your children to dream big. And that if they dream it and can imagine it, it can happen. Dreams can come true. If it's more time with your spouse, it can be yours. And I highly suggest it. I highly, highly suggest it because the lives that are being changed because families are working two different jobs and not seeing each other, I honestly think that none of us got married because we never wanted to see that person again. We got married because we loved the person we were marrying. We got married because we wanted to spend time with that person and have a future with that person and we're thinking honeymoon and we're thinking blissful thoughts and then the week after it's like, oh my gosh. And reality sets in, and a year later, all the dreams are in the closet. And, you know, 10 years later, you forgot what they were. <laughs> Guys, it's time to dust them off. It's time to figure out why you married the person that you married them, that you married, what you loved about them. If things are rough and rocky, start spending more time together and figure out why you fell in love. I promise that this company, as you earn your time back, will bring your family closer together. Because as much as people talk about quality time is better than quantity time, I highly disagree. I think that you have to have both. So earn it back. Earn it back for your marriage. Earn it back for your children. Earn it back for your children's children. Because if you have a happy family and you raise happy children that see the world through eyes of giving and making a difference and blessing lives, and you have the finances to be able to go and make a positive impact on the world, and you pass that on through generation to generation, we have in our hands the ability to make a difference. And in a world that seems to be collapsing and crumbling around us, I don't even watch the news anymore. I don't like to talk politics with people. I don't like to hear the negative, because we have something that can be a beacon of hope in the world. We have something that can be a bright spot when everybody is feeling like everything's falling apart around them. We have an obligation to go out there and share it. So stop prejudging. Stop thinking that person won't do this. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We need to talk to everybody that we know because somewhere in that group of people are your leaders. And somewhere in that group of people are people that will thank you for the rest of their lives because of the way that they have changed and the way that you have changed their lives. So go and share this, go and change your future, make a difference, you have the tools in your hands, this is the time. Everything is in place, the only question to whether this will succeed for you or not is you. So go and change your future, we love you, we believe in you. Have a great rest of the day.